So last week we made the 3D widget part. Is it gonna fit? It is. Here's what we did. We split it in half on our DeWalt multi-saw and I did it mostly because I wanted to see how the fit is. And you can see there, there is a little bit of a crack line right there. And I'm not 100% sure why that is, but we actually super glued this together and gave it a test fit. It was crazy strong. We took a quick test cut as well. I think this is going to work. What I'm curious to see is how well it, how it looks. And I'm not sure how it's going to line up, but let's have some fun. So really quick, Fusion 360, we're gonna show how we uh, create the tool pass to do this. We're gonna go super glue it up and then we're gonna make some chips. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. So here's where we left off. We want to reduce the height of this box the, the old, uh, along here, because we want to machine more of the part. So in fact, if we turn the part on, see here in the, the light bulb next to part one, you can see it's only exposing so much of it and we've got more to it to machine. So down here in the, whatever they call it, the tree, I'm gonna right click um, and do edit feature. I can't, let's see here, why not? Oops, there we go. The folks from Fusion 360 were actually out here in our office. It was really cool of them to stop by. They had a Midwest trip and we gave them some feedback and there's some things that I'm frustrated with or I don't like. And one thing I wish is that you can right click on a part and have it you know, edit it or I think you're supposed to be able to right click and say show in you're supposed to be able to have it basically highlight up in the tree and you need to do that. So they're working on it. And that was my takeaway is there are some shortcomings in Fusion 360, but it's an awesome team and lots of cool things to come. So uh, I'll happy to talk more about that or even do a video on it. So right click here, edit feature, and we'll just reduce it down to 0.45. Perfect. Now we see a lot more of our part. Switch model cam and we're just going to add a new setup so click setup i like to change my orientation excuse me the origin to selected point that lets me hover over here and click that top left corner z-axis is the wrong way click on the arrow y x-axis is the wrong way click on the arrow and now we've got the orientation that we like and i'm going to go ahead and select the model of the of the pillow we'll call it or the rock or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it and to be honest with you that's a pretty decent uh, geometry shape I am going to extend it a little higher just because I'd rather be careful and I don't have an exact height right now so we'll say 1.1 inch oops like so click OK 3D adaptive clearing. We'll do tool 31 to quarter inch three flute end mill, 10,000 RPMs. Everybody caught me last week when I typed 100,000. 30 inches a minute for now. Don't have to select geometry. Bottom height, we will choose here selection and click this face. And we'll actually come, we'll stay a thou above it. Passes. We want to be careful here because too much vibration and too much heat will cause the super glue to fail. The idea with this fixture is you've got the super glue keeping it sucked down and then you've got the, the side walls helping prevent it from, from twisting at all. So it's sort of a one-two punch, at least that's the idea. Super glue is pretty powerful stuff. You want to avoid you know, interrupted cutters like a super fly that really pound the part. And it's a general rule, it's that fine line. You don't want to baby the cutter like we've talked about in the Lakeshore Carbide Tooling Series, uh, but you don't want to dump the heat into it or chatter it or really push it too hard. So we're going to go down to an optimal load of um, 0.075, and we'll do the max rough down can be point, we'll say 0.25. Fine step down, that's okay. We'll leave 10 thou. Uh, looks good, my only thought is, are we taking too much cut? So let's do a simulation. Another thing they're working on is being able to carry over cam simulations from one setup to another, which is really important. 
so that you can, in this example, see what was cut in, say, setup two and setup five. So that, that way your cam simulation is showing what we've got as the remaining stock. So that's probably too much, to be honest with you. So let's reduce the width of cut, 0.05. Now, the maximum roughing step down and fine step down, thanks to folks who, who really helped point this out, what this is saying is when it, when it needs to um, water line down or step down to follow the contour, like here, it's only going 25 thou. But when we get down to here, we can go the whole distance of that we set it to, a quarter inch, and still obey the solid model. We're still making the cut that it wants to make which is great. That way down here, you're not taking 10 steps, you're taking one. We're just gonna have some fun here. If we have to go, uh, if it's too much, we'll come back and we'll reduce the width of cut. Rapid simulate. Looks good to me. Now, our ball, ball end mill finish pass, right click on the adaptive, create derived operation, 3D milling, and we'll do contour. Actually, I didn't like that toolpath. Let's try 3D morphed spiral. If you read that description, it talks about giving a really smooth surface and useful for free form organic surfaces, which is totally what this is. All we're gonna adjust at first is the step over, we'll say 10 thou, and let's see what we get. Sometimes when you're troubleshooting toolpaths, try to change as little one thing at a time. So obviously the problem here is it doesn't go down far enough. First thing to check is under geometry. And again, Fusion 360 does a good job with the pop-up windows, but here we can see we want it to be the outside. We want the tool, tool to be able to go outside of the model box. Uh, in other words, it doesn't need to stay inside the model. So instead of center on boundary, we'll say outside boundary. That should fix that. Perfect. There was another really cool feature I noticed. I'm not sure it's gonna do anything here, but contact point boundary, if you, if you look at that, it's gonna basically avoid machine less air if it realizes the tool is already cut into it. So something to check out. We wanna try doing something that could be really helpful, which is, we talked about in the Lakeshore Carbide surface feet per minute. You wanna avoid cutting with the center of any sort of tool that's tapered or rounded like a ball nose end mill because there's really no or low service feet per minute there. So if we go to passes on up down milling, we can say up milling. Awesome. What that's going to do is start from the bottom. Now we get all these retracts that you see in the green and the yellow. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know exactly what this up down shallow angle is, but we increased it, increased it to 10. Um, it did what I wanted in terms of the toolpath. I'll get back to you guys on what that actually means because I should know. And what else do I want to change? I think we're okay. It's good to do a sanity check, I think, and see, okay, this is, whoa, really? That's a six minute toolpath, 100 inches a minute, but that's crazy, good. So you can see it's at the bottom, it's coming up. Looks pretty awesome. Sweet. All right, let's go super glue this thing together. So one of the concerns I had when we cut it was, was making sure we still align it up. So we've got those machine faces. We're gonna set it loosely in our vise here. That'll keep it aligned. And then we can actually just set our part in here. And, and I mean, it's a feel thing, but you can feel. I can see that that registers in there. It clicks in. It's not budging. Um, it doesn't twist and it doesn't rock, which should mean we're good. So I'm going to snug that vise down, and you can check it once if you want. And good old super glue. This stuff is a little smelly. Now, there's a big question of how much you need, and I'm not an expert, but um, you need enough, but more, more is not always better. You don't necessarily need to dump it all over the place. And I should have grabbed actually a toothpick or something to kind of spread it around. Um, 
you, you don't want to use your fingers, that's for sure. And let's, we're going to see if that's enough. And again, you kind of feel it. Make sure. The question that I have is how much thickness does the super glue add? When we were doing that washer project, we used a depth mic and we were getting, I think, a couple of thou, uh, but we didn't have a problem holding the tolerance, which was half a thou actually, um, once you adjusted for it. Um, so now that's on there. I'm going to set a 246 block down. And we are actually going to give that a half an hour to cure. Um, there's a ton of cool things about super glue that I wish I knew more about. And I'd love to hear from the folks that do know in the comments below. Um, two of the cool things are one, it was, I think, developed to actually um, attach tissue or human cuts back together by doctors. And two is that super glue will much more quickly cure in the presence of moisture, or humidity, or liquid. And one of the tricks that I've learned. Um, it's a little hard here, but if you actually breathe on it, that is enough moisture that can cause it to really cure a lot faster. So we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, time has elapsed. Pull it out. Here we are. Now here's the crazy thing. You can't twist that out of there. I think that's what's so cool about this. Um, and that's what we were experimenting with offline was uh, or last early this week before we recorded this was just how strong and resilient it is. Let's go make some chips. <laughs> 